Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm really sorry I've been absent for a while but things have just been so busy here on the flower farm and as you can see there's it's a wilderness here now in the polytunnel. The Dorcas is taller than me and there are a few flowers in here but there are also a lot of weeds which I'm ashamed to say but hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can get this dug out and start again fresh with it with a new batch of flowers. So I really want to just catch up with you all and tell you what I've been up to in the last few weeks. As I said I've been very busy. I have been filming a few things so I'll be able to put in some nice clips to show you what I've been up to but um, I just haven't had time to do any editing because the picking and packaging of the flowers and all of the work that goes along with getting everything ready for the summer ahead has just been quite full on. So as you can see in here is a little bit wild. The field, um, so I'm around the back of the farm now. If you haven't followed me for very long, um, I'll just quickly explain. I have two flower fields which equal about half an acre and I have a new field which is adjacent to my polytunnel which is now fully planted up apart from one or one about one and a half beds and uh, then I have the polytunnel and the greenhouse around this side of the farm and then at the front of the farm I have a, a small area that is just under a quarter of an acre which I'm trying to turn into a bit of a perennial area but that was my original flower field that I started off with back in 2017. So I'm trying to transfer that over to more perennials and then this um, field here is going to be annuals and I will probably creep in some perennials at some point along the line as well. So. What I've been doing is planting out, getting everything planted out in the field and we'll go out and I'll give you a tour of how everything's looking at the moment. And then um, what else have I been doing? Uh, things have been flowering like the Dorcas behind me. The Sweet Williams are over now, but they have been flowering really well. Um, I've got some Snapdragons behind me that are looking great and also some Oregano and some Marjoram behind me that is almost flowering. That's been taking quite a while. Um, and the reason why this has got so overgrown is because I had ranunculus in this bed and um, I didn't want to start pulling the weed membrane up and pulling the weeds up whilst the ranunculus was still in there because I was still picking them and I didn't want to disturb them. Um, but now the ranunculus are finished and I can start getting rid of this mess here and I am just wondering whether to wait and leave it until I can get my hands on some more compost or I'm just going to order in some bags of compost because I need um, to refresh the compost in here because it's bad well the soil is bad in here the other thing that I've been up to is I've planted out some more perennials in my front field I have planted penstemons in this bed here you can see the bigger plants are obviously the more established ones that just came up as a full clump and then I've got these smaller ones that I grew from seed last year. Um, so they're in there, they've just filled in those two gaps there. And then I have um, put the Lismachia in this, this bed along here. And then over there, there's four more penstemons. And I really hate the higgledy piggledy nature of the way that I've planted this. But what I'm hoping is that this year these plants are going to bulk up and then next year I can divide them to make full either full rows or full beds of each variety just so that things aren't um, mixed up too much and then I brought some more plants over here look at Reggie I love it when he does this he scratches his back on the floor um, there's some more geums from when I planted these ones here these parts of the geums just fell off bits of the roots fell off so I potted them up and they look good now so I'm going to plant those out and I also have some of this lamb's ear I took some cuttings of this and not a lot of it survived so I've got a few left and there's actually a few 
in this field that have self-seeded from a plant that I had in here in the past so I'm going to dig those up and put them into a row so that I've got um, a nice supply of these. I love the, the greyish fluffy texture of these in bouquets and they have the nice purple spiky flowers on them so I'm going to get those planted up and this is going to be a bit of a higgledy piggledy bed but um, like I said next year hopefully I'll be able to have full rows of everything. I've been making some more regenerative farming inputs so I started making some fermented fish, uh, some fish amino acid um, solution. Uh, I got one of my friends to get me some fish from a fishing trip that he was going on on the coast and he managed to get me a few fish so I chopped those up and mixed them with some brown sugar and they have been left to ferment for six months or so um, and that will be a really good source of nutrients for the microbiology in the soil as well as the plants and then I also went ahead and made some water soluble calcium which is good to use at the reproductive stages of the plant so I'm guessing it will produce better flowers so we're going to have to see where the, uh, whether the evidence of that is um, makes those statements true uh, and the way that you create that is to not fry eggshells but you put eggshells over heat so we had a barbecue the other night and I just put the eggshells on the barbecue and that takes all of the membrane and the protein and the fats away from the eggshells so you're just left with the um with the the, the bare uh, eggshell and then you mix that um 10 to 1 with brown rice vinegar and i used organic brown rice vinegar that i just found on amazon and um that creates water soluble calcium and that was really cool to watch because it felt like a science experiment because of the way that the vinegar reacted with the the eggshells it's it bubbled up and it created a really nice reaction so I'm looking forward to using that and I actually won a competition the other day which the Essex allotment was running with Matabi sprayers and I won a battery backpack sprayer which is a 15 litre one and I was really chuffed about that because I bought a knapsack sprayer the other week which I showed you um, and I was using it but you get a really tired arm after putting all of these amendments on the soil because you are using so much water to dilute these things down. Um, you have to fill up your knapsack a lot of times and all the pumping gets your arm a bit tired so I'm so grateful that I won that competition um, and my sprayer has been received safely so I'm looking forward to trying that out with um, some of the creations, some of the um, Korean natural farming potions and the Jodam um, microorganism solutions and things like that. What else have I been up to? I've been on holiday so I enjoyed my holiday very much. I definitely needed the break like I said before and I think I haven't actually watched Serena and Ian's video yet um, but you can't eat the grass posted something the other day about not being able to keep up with all of the picking and um, all of the jobs that they've got to do um, so yeah it's tiring being up late at night picking and then up early the next morning arranging flowers and things takes it out of you a little bit so I really enjoyed my holiday down in Cornwall but I'm back now and I'm ready to um, enjoy the rest of the summer with these beautiful flowers that we've got around me. So yeah, uh, this, this that's the polytunnel um, and I will go and show you around the rest of the farm um, and I'm going to pick some flowers today. I picked a lot last night for my honesty box but I'm going to pick some more tonight for my honesty box tomorrow so I'll take you along picking with me as well. So this is my second flower field behind me which is about 360 meters squared and it is full apart from this bed over here which was extremely weedy and dry the other week so I just covered it with corrugated cardboard and put the weed membrane back over the top and I'm, what I'm thinking of planting in there is artichokes and maybe some delphiniums and things like that and perennial sort of things. So apart from that the rest of the field is pretty much full apart from gaps where the slugs um, took advantage of my plants and I actually just saw a rabbit running across the back of the field even though this is supposed to be fenced securely against rabbits. Um, 
but things are doing well nevertheless so I will show you what I've got here so this bed behind me is sunflowers and here behind me is status and then some helichrysum And then behind me here, we have some kind of salvia, but I can't tell you what variety exactly. It'll come to me. I think it's salvia farnesia or something like that. And then we have some puny looking snapdragons along the rest of this bed and I'm not sure what they're going to come to because I sewed them in back in February and they look absolutely pathetic but I've noticed a lot of people asking online about pathetic looking snapdragons this year so I don't think it's just me um, and then here we have slightly unsuccessful bed of larkspur here um, which has a lot of self-seeded auric in it, which I'm not going to complain about because it's filled in the gaps of the the holes in the weed membrane that where the larkspur was eaten by the slugs or whatever managed to get hold of the larkspur. So not too much larkspur available this year, but hopefully next year we can prevent any sort of slug or rabbit attack. Then Cyanoglossum, forget me not, that's just starting to flower a little bit there. Then behind that we have Nigella. And this is the first year where I've ever been able to grow Nigella successfully. I've not been able to grow it successfully before now. And then I have a little bit at the end here of Saponaria, but it was standing in water for quite a long time when we flooded no, we didn't we didn't flood severely but it, it wasn't very good weather conditions so that's very short stemmed I don't think it's going to really come to a lot then here we have that's the scabious ping pong ping pong is that the one yeah the, the ball one that you use for the seed pods um, then some more varieties of scabious then here we have lots of mallow which I really enjoyed using as like a filler last year then we have Bupleurum slugs out a lot of that as well so I've got much of that then a bit of unsuccessful corn cockle I know I sound very negative about the things that haven't been successful but to be honest I'm not surprised I'm not too bothered about it because I think I've got more flowers than I ever have done before so um, I'm not too worried about it um, then we have yeah, corn cockle there and then right here, corn flowers behind me which I've been picking some of quite a lot of those got eaten by slugs too and then we have dill here which is looking nice it's getting quite tall now which is good the thing that I worry about is dedicating all my time to dwarf plants then we have some Dorcas here. I thought that quite a lot of this had been chewed, but it's actually there's actually quite a few plants looking okay. Then some cosmos here. Again, a little bit sparse, but not too worried about it. And then go back up to the top to show you a lot of asters. I think there's 300 or so here. All along here here we have amaranthus for the rest of this run and um, that needs pinching need to need to come back and pinch all of that amaranthus and then on this last bed here we have auric and 
some ammy, uh, some more auric. There's this, uh, what's the varieties? One's called plumes, which is a red variety, and then the other one's some kind of sunset or something like that, sunset or some kind of colours like that. Then, then from here back to the auric is Bells of Ireland and I was so happy that I'd got all of the Bells of Ireland to germinate and then some things nibbled all of the seedlings after I've put them in the ground which is very annoying so hopefully we'll just get a couple of those and then we can have it, harvest some seed from them and then from here up to the Bells is what is it? Bee Balm that's another first time grower for me and then here we could in theory fit another bed in here um, but what I'm going to do is sow a cover crop on it so I just need to do a bit of weeding on here and then I've ordered some cover crop I'm going to cover it all in, an, in another video about cover cropping um, from Cotswold Seed Company I think it was called and I've ordered a summer cover crop for that so keep your eye out on future videos and I'll let you know about the summer uh, the cover crop and how it goes how I'm sowing it and everything and how I'm going to treat it um, so yeah that's it really for this field I'm just sort of sitting back waiting for everything to grow everything to start flowering I like this time of year because it's like been a bit of a mad rush getting everything in the ground and then you just sort of sat waiting for everything to come to fruition so um all it's all it is is weeding picking the flowers that are already here and then um yeah making sure i need to sow my biennial so i will be doing that as well and then there's a few things here that i haven't planted out yet like m some mint plants um, I sowed another succession of sunflowers so there's a few things in there that can be planted and then I also sowed some stocks to go in the polytunnel um, there's nothing really there was some zinnias in here but I've, I think I'm going to give up on the zinnias because um, they've been in the trays for a long time now and I think they're getting a bit fed up with me so what I'm going to do now is pick a few flowers from this side of the farm and then I'm going to go off to the front of the farm and I'll show you what's going on in that field. So I finished picking in the other field and now I'm in the front field and there's a few things to pick in here so as I'm going round I will show you what's going on in here this sedum has started to bud up so hopefully that'll be flowering soon um, then we've got some flocks in the middle there I'd like to take cuttings from those and increase my stock of those because they're always nice and lovely um, let's see okay oh I thought I'd as well give you an update on the eucalyptus So if you watched my video uh, which I posted in March, I coppiced all of my eucalyptus, well not all of it, half of it. Um, these are the trees that I didn't coppice, they must be uh, maybe 10 or 15 foot tall now. Um, here's another tree. So it's got some nice new growth on it now it's looking really good so hopefully by sort of winter time we'll have some good long stems on it um let me show you over here one side of the field seems to be a lot more productive than the other it's just based on the maturity of the perennials really so behind me here we have a big long bed of Achillea, uh, there's lots of pink, some yellow cream and some white and then here we have ox eye daisies, there's absolutely loads of ox eye daisies, there's too many for me to pick um, and they've also started to wear themselves down in the rain and the wind and they've sort of gone all over the place so maybe I'm going to have to give those a trim. 
Behind me here is an empty bed which I'm going to put a cover crop on as well as the other field around the back. I'm going to cover crop this because um, I, I planted some things in it over winter and they just didn't do very well because the, so the structure of the soil and everything in here is just all wrong. So what I'm going to do is cover crop it and hopefully I can improve the soil structure in here. And here I have some valerian that started flowering. Some white and a pink variety and I've just ordered some fresh seed so that I can grow that one. A bit more of that one because I do quite like it. But then when we were on our holiday in Cornwall last week, um, it was growing wild everywhere. So I hope people don't think that I'm trying to sell them a weed because I do actually like the way it looks. <laughs> Um, and then the artichokes are looking amazing. Let me see if I can get through here. Oh, it's a jungle. Can you see all the artichokes behind me? I'm going to pick some of those to my bouquets tomorrow. And then here I have some limonium, which is the sea lavender. Uh, that should be flowering soon in the next couple of weeks. And then here we have the lupins which are just about finished I'm not sure whether they'll flower again this year I'm not sure whether they'll flower in autumn time or whether that is it for now and then I have some giant scabious here which is flowering the breeze is picking up a little bit now um, this is Eryngium. I finally got some plants rather than trying to sow it from seed like I always do and try and fail. And then some bits of Verbascum. It's a little bit patchy in this corner of this part of the field. Um, and here I have some Alcamilla mollis, which I've been struggling to remember the name of it all week for some reason. That's also starting to flop a little bit in the rain and the wind but there's literally millions of stems of that um, so I'm picking a lot of it um, over here this is Verbena hastata this was a perennial that I bought from my friend's closing down flower farm sale um, that's going to be good and I'm, I can divide that and take cuttings from it this is a weedy bed behind me that needs weeding and covering with some weed membrane. And then I have some penstemons here which are really, really tall. I can't exactly remember the name of the variety but I will try and find out. And then there's the geums. The ge I hope you can hear me then I turn the microphone away from me. The geums here which are just about finished as well. Um, here, this is Lysomachia, I think it's called the Gooseneck Loose Strife. I'm really loving this, but obviously it's tiny, so I'm waiting for it to bulk up a little bit. And I have that in a white variety somewhere as well. And then, here's some perennials that I planted here the other day. There's some penstemons that I grew from seed. There's one here which is called Twizzle Coral. Looking forward to seeing how that looks. And then um, I have the lamb's ear over there which is going to be a nice foliage filler. And that's, that, that one has the purple flowers on it um, in summer. Behind me is another empty bed. Um, I'm planning in the next couple of weeks to go to my favorite ever garden center. I'm gonna take you with me and I'm gonna buy some perennials. <laughs> There's a goat. The goat's running on the drive and the dogs are kicking off about it. Yeah, in the next couple of weeks I'm going to go to my favourite garden centre, I'm going to take you along with me and I'm going to buy some perennials to fill up this flower field. And then we're moving on to the dahlia beds. So there's two dahlia beds here, they've recovered from the slug attack and they're coming on okay. More dahlias behind me there. There's a small patch of Calibri poppies that were planted last autumn here. There's only a couple of plants 
um, but I'm going to be saving the seeds from those. This has a perennial in it, that is Salvia sclerea. And then here behind me, I have two full beds of um, grasses. So we've got grasses there and some absolutely tiny um, bunny tails. So I think I've bought the wrong variety there. <laughs> and then here we have turd flax, which I planted a few weeks ago, and some achillea up at the top there. And then two more beds of dahlias. And then this Greek cress, which is my favorite thing ever. Look at it. It's just so abundant. In the middle there, we have the raspberries, which I love to use for foliage. Um, and look at how it's popping up in the grass. have more so maybe I'll have to dig it up and replant the the runners we will see so I'm just going to pick some flowers now um, and then I'm going to bunch them up tomorrow morning for my honesty box So that is it for this week's video guys i really hope you enjoyed it and i'm really sorry that i haven't been able to post for a while um i hope i managed to remember everything that i've been doing in the last few weeks and um, give you a good recap of what's been going on um, on the farm so next week i'm going to be preparing some of the flower beds to put the cover crops in picking more flowers and um, generally keeping everything tidy and things so i will take you along with me and i will try to keep regular with my youtube videos so if you've got anything that you want to say in the comments if you've got any questions or any suggestions for things in the future then let me know and uh, i will take those into account and i will get back to you um, and also i have just been up to the honesty box and all of the flowers are sold out for today so it's about one o'clock now and um I've had two sellout day rows, two sellout days in a row. So I sold out yesterday in two hours, and today within a few hours as well. So I've just got a few flowers um, that are going to be collected later on today, and it's time to go home and edit this video and get it uploaded for you guys. So I will see you next time, and thanks so much for watching.